Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the new Chrome Tour golf ball from Callaway. As some kind of role for Scotty Scheffler and embraced it as good buddy. They share the birthday on Friday. That's Tom Kim. Scotty beats Kim on the first extra hole here at the Travelers Championship. Now, Scotty has now won six of his last ten starts. It's tall cotton here. Six or more wins in a season over the last 40 years. Tiger, uh, Tiger had 10 seasons <laughs> of five or more wins. And at the same age as, as Scotty is 28, Tiger had 39 victories and eight majors. Hats off, Nick Price, BJ Singh. There's the champ right there. Uh, for a guy who likes to keep it simple, you've had your share of drama this year. <laughs> I mean, Scotty, congratulations. <laughs> That was nice. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was a long week, but a lot of fun here in uh, Connecticut. It's always a great event for us, and um, yeah, fortunate to be uh, sitting here with you guys. You had so many high moments today. Can we take you through some of the shots and uh, ask you what you were thinking uh, in the moment? We go back to the sixth hole. I think you remember that. It's a beautiful pitch you hit here. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, the hole was tough playing into the wind today, and then was able, was able to draw a pretty good lie there in the rough and hit a nice pitch there to uh, about six, seven feet. And, I felt like the putt was a pretty challenging read, and um, you know I did a really good job of getting that ball started online and um, knocking that one. I felt like that was a pretty important putt at that stage in the round. I hadn't made a birdie yet, so it was nice to uh, see that ball go in. And then off to the seventh, you know, down the fairway on the green. What is this? About 15, 20 feet or so? Yeah, this was an interesting read here. It actually went. It was a double breaker and pretty straight overall, and so those can always be challenging, you know, just because that very little break, and so it was nice to see that one going as well. At any one time, there were five, six guys that could have won this, but it was kind of coming down between you and Tom Kim. Both of you had similar distances in here. What a shot this is. Yeah, that was that was one of the best shots I hit all week. It was um, just a little bit off of the three wood, you know, playing into the wind, and I was trying to hit just a little squeeze fade, and it came off, you know, right, you know, just how I wanted to. and. From a squeeze fade to a low burning draw. I don't see you hitting any low burning draws. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, it was nice makeup yesterday. I hit it in the junk there off the tee, and so it was nice <laughs> hitting a really good tee shot down there and give myself another uh, another good opportunity to make a birdie. Did you make a big adjustment to hit that low draw? Uh, not really. I just moved it back in my stance, and I just tried to make sure I got it up over that. You know, it's an uphill tee shot, so make sure I got it high enough. And um, yeah, it was another nice, really nice wedge in here. This one's pretty challenging, just because you're so high up above where it is and hitting those little field shots can be tough sometimes but I was fortunate to uh, get the right number there. And what a gorgeous shot at 15. I mean do you set up and try to cut it off the water? What's your target here? Actually I was just imagining the same shot I hit on 13. Uh, it was basically the same shot I hit there. Um, so it was nice having a really good visual of a shot that I'd hit two holes earlier and was able to hit the same shot there and um, put it in a good spot and you know make a make an easy birdie there I would say. And then after the chaos how do you get your wits about you and and sort of as you're lining up this birdie putt at the 18th and get back into game mode. Yeah, getting back into game mode, it was fortunate I was out there with Tom. You know, we were kind of just both standing there each other, with each other trying to calm each other down because you don't want the tournament to end on, you know, something weird happening because of a protest or whatever. So it was uh, good for both of us to be out there and calm down. And, you know, he calmed down a little bit more than I did. He poured in his putt there, which yeah, was pretty you just, nice. You couldn't shake it. What were you thinking when he was over this? Did you I expect mean, I, him to make it? I expected him to make it. You know, we play enough golf at home and he loves those. I feel like those types of putts I don't love. The straighter uphill putts, he loves them. He pours them in almost every time. And so I had a, I had a pretty good feel on that one. You'll good. see him again at the President's Cup, I have a feeling. Yeah, hopefully I'll see less of those fist bumps at the President's Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and then, are you hitting three wood off of the tee? The, so you can apply the pressure, or is it just No, for it's just for me to be able to get that ball in play. Um, if I miss the fairway with driver, if you miss the fairway right, it's not good. And if I hit driver and miss the fairway left, it goes right up into the lip of that bunker. I have no shot. And so I hit three with just to make sure I give myself an opportunity and you know, kind of trust my irons there. And you know, I stuck to the plan in the playoff, even though you know I felt like I really needed to make birdie. I still felt like three was the uh, the best way to get that done. Scotty, you're better than you've ever been. In what ways now? Would you say? I think mentally this year I've really just kind of uh, kind of rode the the wave a little bit of playing tournament golf. You know, I felt like I brought the right intensity to each round. Um, and, you know, Teddy's been a huge part of that, and my, my team around me as well has been, been tremendous in kind of making sure I stay in the right frame of mind and, you know, keep me accountable when I'm not acting the right way on the golf course and, you know, just staying in the right headspace. I think, uh, you know, this year I think Teddy and I have been as tough of, as tough as we've ever been on the course. Mm. When you talk about staying in the right headspace, I mean, monumental achievements, you know, the, the idea that you would be sated or goals reached or somewhat complacent, I think that would be a normal reaction. How do you show up every single week in the right frame of mind, hungry to compete again? 
Well, I think it's just one of those deals where when you win once, it's really amazing, and then the feeling lasts for about 10 minutes, and then you're kind of on to the next thing, and you want to do it again, just because those moments walking up 18, we are in contention, being able to hold a putt like Tom did on 18 is, I think, the moments for us as players that we kind of, you know, really, really get excited about, and that's why you put in the long hours, that's why you practice, and to be able to celebrate on 18 with my, my wife and son is, uh, you know, a feeling that I will continue to chase after. You seem to have found the perfect balance, and I don't know how you do it, because you, you, on the on one hand, I've heard you say several times that golf doesn't define you. On the other, that you hate to lose. So how can you hating to lose so much not define you? How do you find the balance? How do you turn one on and the other on? Well, I think it's it's a constant battle, really. It's challenging just because, um, you know, week to week out here, we are somewhat defined by what we do. You know, we put our lives into becoming good at the sport. And so at times when you know, you're getting asked interview, uh, you know, questions in interviews and when people fancy you and out here inside the ropes, you know, you are a golfer. And so at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I feel like I'm really defined by my faith and, um, you know, I'm not in control of what goes on. I put in the work, I do everything that I'm supposed to do at home so I can come out here and play to the best of my abilities. And it's really just so that I'm able to pray for, uh, play freely out there just because I want to win so bad. It's, it's almost easier for me to take a step back and not want it as bad as I do and be able to just to go out there and play. Scotty, you weren't the only Scheffler with a really good moment this week. Your dad, Scott, <laughs> uh, was out this hot day, handed out bottles of water to, to the fans. <laughs> just curious, what would your dad teach you uh, that, that still stays with you beyond golf, but in terms of life? Um, well, first of all, he taught me how to be a great dad. You know, I've, uh, I get emotional when I think about it because I feel like having a son really changed how I feel about my father and my mother just because it's it's so wild being on the other side of it. But I really feel like my dad would do anything so that none of us would get a scratch on our arm or our feelings wouldn't get hurt. I mean, my both my parents made many sacrifices for us growing up, and I'm so thankful for that. And I really, I mean, I can't put into words, you know, how much they really care about us. And I just, you know, looking back on, you know, things in my life, whether I was upset, you know, when you're a teenager and you don't want to listen to your parents and, you know, really kind of being on the other side of that and imagining what I'd say to my son, you know, I just, you know, I'm really thankful to have such great parents just because I, you know, on both sides of our family, my parents and Meredith's parents are both such great role models for us to, uh, to parent our little one. Um, we know you have great hands. How's your diaper changing game? You know, it's pretty good. You know, the Solid. diaper changing game, uh, I will say, I got to admit, the first, you know, eight to ten were pretty awful, but I learned quick. Well, welcome, yeah. welcome to the club. <laughs> uh, Scotty, it's been uh, special to watch you do your work this year. We think maybe another five tournaments ahead to close this thing out. The, the Olympic Games as well, I know, means a lot to you and the President's Cup. So. Uh, yeah, it'll be an exciting season. You know, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to getting home and getting some rest and preparing for uh, for the Open. Okay. Scotty, thank you. And right. congrats. Thanks, Thanks for coming show. up. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank another W. Uh, win number six in 2024 for Scotty Scheffler. And he does it uh, in thrilling fashion here. First extra hole. And that'll do it for us. Great thanks to Andy Bissett, Nathan Groob, and everybody at Travelers. We've had yet another wonderful week here in Cromwell, Connecticut. Scheffler the winner.